How's it going YouTube? Come in today with another video. And today guys with the brand new is my brand new guide for Danger Tier Lament. This deck is a lot of fun to play and very explosive and I really want to make sure that everyone knows how to play the deck before we get the brand new support and Magnificent Mavens being the Ishizu cards in November. Those cards are very impactful for the deck and I really want to make sure that everyone has a basic understanding of the deck and knows a lot of the really cool interactions before we do get those cards and we incorporate those to the strategy. If you haven't already checked out my sponsors over in Imperium Duelist, Dragon Shield, or Gem, definitely go ahead and check them all out down in the description below. Without further to do let's hop right on into the video so the first thing that we're going to do is cover a lot of the basics and make sure that everyone knows exactly what these cards do we left out meta noise it's the other trap card that allows you to book a moon and then foolish it's not that good right now especially book a moon still really good ie snow's insane you know but at the same point i feel like these other two traps are just a lot more impactful at the moment being solely that continuous trap is so good the fact that in the mirror match having this and collido heart is just so good is so good collido heart in the mirror is so important and we'll talk about why that is but this being a continuous and also a permanent imperm is really crazy then you can go ahead and send a monster you control to the graveyard and then if this card alone is sent to the graveyard by a card effect so if they choose to like blow up your back row or if you mill this it turns into a roto which is really crazy i play this card at three i think that's very strong uh this is something that you definitely want to open up every game and then even if you have to send it off of things like your rhino heart still very strong again being able to get that roto as well really nice Nice. The Crime is a one up in the sideboard. This is a card that goes ahead and stops things like Mystic Mind, stops Dark Ruler, and then it also shuffles the card back into the deck. So it's a spell trap or monster effect. So that comes up quite a bit. And then if this card is milled or sent by card effect, you can add back a banished tier limit. So if one gets like crowed, uh, but usually that's not the case. Usually you're just getting to this immediately. So you have this, especially if it's games two or three. Uh, really important card to have in your sideboard for when you're going first. I always side this card in 100% of the time. The next one here is Merely. This is a level 2 that allows for a lot of the combination decks that you see, like the Dangerous Sprite Tier Punk. This is something that is really important too on summon it's a mill 3, and then Havness and Chiron alike also have the ability to fuse when they're sent to the Great Bag card effect. All once per turn, you really got to keep track of this when you're playing, so that you don't mess up and try to activate another effect twice. This is why, like, whenever you're playing, I always have it in my mind. I'm like, okay, I've used Merly. And then I'll go and be like, okay, I still need to use Havness and Chiron. And then I'll use Havness. So I'm like, all right, the only one I have left is Shiren. And I'll tell myself that like five times while I'm trying to make my uh, line of play. And that's really important. You really got to tell yourself exactly like what you have left because there's a lot to keep track of in this deck. And you really don't realize that until you start playing it. But there is a lot of really long grind games that happen, especially in the mirror match because of using Havness on your opponent's turn. And then they'll turn around and use one too. And you go through so many names each turn that you really want to make sure that you're keeping track of like what you've already used and what your opponent's already used. So Havness is the next one though. This is the hand trap. It's a win effect. So you have to respond directly to a card that is trying to activate on the field. This card allows you to summon itself to the board and then mill three. So that's pretty crazy too, because again, playing on turn zero is pretty nice. Uh, I've done it quite a few times where you can set up like the kit. And even in the mirror match, this is something too, where you really want to decide if you want to use the Havness like early on, because if your opponent's not trying to blind dweller, if you resolve Havness turn zero and you're playing playing a Samir match, they're just going to make Dweller on you. So you really want to make sure that you're just being really heads up about that. And sometimes it's fine. Like if it's toward the end of my opponent's combo and I don't see a way for them to put two forwards on the board, a lot of times I'll just go ahead and like use the Havness at that point because they didn't plan for Dweller. But if it's really early on you're dropping Havness, you might just go ahead and get Dweller. And that's something that you really want to avoid. Uh, I've seen that happen a lot. But sometimes just not using Havness turn zero in the mirror match is really important. Uh, also, Rhino Heart is really good to make that Dweller. The fact that if this card is milled, you can reborn it by sending a tier from your hand to the grave. And then when it hits the board, you can go ahead and send a tier limit monster from your deck to the grave. I think that's really strong though, because there's a lot of times where I'll like reborn a Rhino and then dump a name and then make Mud Dragon by returning like a danger in a name. And at that point, you can go ahead and just make a really quick Dweller. And then the Dweller gains that 500 because it has the water as a material. A lot of people forget about that. It's really important because Dweller gets gigantic under that. 
And then also the ability to have another name, Shiren, to go ahead and just get rid of a monster from your hand. This card is really nice. There's a lot of situations where this will come up. And also if you have like a snow in your hand that you want in the graveyard, or if you open up like a dead hand trap, you can go ahead and get rid of it with Shiren, which is really nice too. Uh, this is another one that allows you to fuse. But again, being able to send a monster from your hand to the graveyard, summon this card, and then mill three. This is another level four for your board to go ahead and make that dweller, which is also really impactful so moving on to what the fusions do here we have kit Kalos. this card is really strong this is something that you really want to imperm if you're in the mirror match or if you're playing against the deck you really want to stop kit it has two very strong effects on summon you can either add or send a tier limit card this is really important too because you can go ahead and get to your crime your soliac if you need to get to your merely which is typically the play that you do you'll go ahead and summon kit close and then you'll add merely to your hand you'll use kit close effect you'll summon merely and then send kit close and then on a new chain you'll go kit close one merely two or you it just depends on which one you want to go for typically i will do merely two because if my opponent has gamma and they game on my merely i'm just going to be going ahead and using the effect of fusion anyway i'd rather protect the bigger mill at that point and the mill eight is really nice and this is something that you'll see a lot too even if you just mill one name it's really impactful or like snow so kick close plus merely is the standard combo and it's really strong then having Kaleido Heart, this card is really cool too. It cannot be used as fusion material, so you can always feel safe having this on your board if you're playing against the mirror match, because Super Poly literally doesn't matter. And then also, if this card is special summon or if an Aqua is sent to your grave by card effect, you can go ahead and target a opponent's card and then shuffle it back into the deck. And then if this card is sent to the grave by card effect, you can special summon this card. And if you do, send a tier limit card from your deck to the graveyard. So this is also fairly impactful. I like this a lot. Uh, this is a card that you set up with Soliac. And it's really important in the mirror match because you really want to make sure that you're getting rid of Kaleidos and Snows. A lot of times I'll force the interaction from my opponent to have to snow me. And then at that point, I'll use Kaleido to bounce their snow back to their deck because you really want to make sure that you're not in a position where you can't go for game because they can keep blocking with snow. So this is something where they get rid of their graveyard doing that, but I'd rather just like force a snow interaction and then Kaleido spin it. Or if they already have a Kaleido on their board, spin that back to their extra deck as well but make sure if they have a field spell up that you're trying to clear that too with like your field spell because field spell is really impactful like if you shovel back their Kaleido it will trigger their field spell so that's something that you really want to make sure that you're on top of uh but overall Kaleido is like one of the craziest cards in the deck it's very good so a lot of people ask me, you know, hand traps versus dangers, which one's more correct? Which one should you run? I think that there is a lot to say about running dangers because I think that that's just the better build. I do main deck Nibiru though, even though you don't typically run hand traps with dangers, I still think that Nibiru is really strong. I do think, however, though, if you are going to run hand traps, the only ones at the moment that I think are really impactful are going to be like Crow and Imperm. I think Imperm is crazy right now. If you Imperm Kit Kalos, it really does go a long way it makes it very awkward to play at that point and you really have to waste one infusions to bring back out a kit just to go ahead and get that mill eight so their hand traps are still going to be really nice and especially if you're playing as like exo sister i know lately i've been wanting to side ogre because the ophiel when it hits the board it has a mandatory effect so you can go ahead and ghost ogre that then you put them on gotta have extender and can't make magnifica so at that point it's really strong too uh but at the same point i don't think that main decking hand traps besides like nibiru or or even Imperm is the way. Uh, I think that Nibiru and Imperm are like the best two, and then Crow is like the third best, even though it does a lot right now, but usually only against like the mirror match. Uh, but those hand traps are really strong. I think that hand traps in general right now, it just feels like you're hand looping yourself when you play against a lot of the different decks that are out there. I only play Nibiru right now because I feel like it's really impactful against the mirror match, especially, and being able to just shut down the board of like Dweller, Elf, IP. Like, I don't even care if I like trigger the Kaleido heart i'd rather just go ahead and deal with the dweller which is a bigger part for me so i think that's where the nibiru really matters for that like turn zero your opponent doesn't really know what they're playing against so they just summon dweller uh, and that can be really impactful too 
Uh, and it's also important to say because a lot of times they're making the elf and then summoning Dweller under the elf. So it makes Imperm a lot less good. So there's a lot to say about main decking Nibiru right now. I think that it's really strong. So why Nibiru is so important though? Again, it, talking more so about getting rid of the Dweller that your opponent makes like turn zero. So you can go ahead and just not have to worry about it. But also Nibiru is really good because it really punishes if your opponent overextends. But not only in the sense that you clear their board is you clear your own board and so nibiru tributes for a card effect and this is really important because if you have cards like kaleido heart on your board or even just a tier limit it will trigger your tier limit which is really crazy because then you're just netting free advantage on your opponent's turn all the recyclability in the deck so just go ahead and just summon out a free kit close get more advantage get a card that's really impactful or you can like summon a kit and then add a haveness and so if your opponent does have any extension through nibiru they now have to play through a haveness which is really impactful as well so there's quite a few ways that nibiru really does become impactful in this deck and i think that main deck can get was one of the best decisions that i've had so far and this card will remain in my main deck for now are these cards worth to run and this is a question that i get quite a bit so divine arsenal aa zeus sky thunder this is a card that we've seen in so many different decks and so many different strategies because of how impactful this card really can be in the mirror match, I think that is really nice that you can summon Dweller and then detach one, attack, and then make Zeus. It's pretty crazy because you can just clear your entire opponent's board, Kaleidos, Soliex, and all, and just make sure that none of it resolves, which is really strong. It's really good. But at the same point, I don't know if I want to run the Zeus option here. And it really, there's one flex spot in the extra deck, and it can be like Redoer, Zeus, Opelousa, whichever one you really want to run. But at the same point, I think that if my Dweller still has another material on it, I'd rather just keep that Dweller on the board because of cards like Havness as well and being able to play on each other's turn. I'd rather just have a two-turn Dweller and deal with the rest of the board because if my opponent has a board and i have dweller a lot of times i have a lot of other resources as well and i just want to go ahead and just get rid of as much off the board as possible and keep that dweller live because at that point it's just shutting down your opponent for two whole turns so which is really strong so i don't really know if zeus is the answer it does clear your own board too so it triggers a lot as well but at the same point i think that just having the dweller is just much more impactful at the end of the day also, Opelousa is really cool. I think this card definitely deserves a spot in the extra deck because of the fact that it stops cards like Nibiru. But if my hand's already really good and I feel like my opponent has something like Nibiru, then I'll only fuse like twice and I'll make sure that second fusion is the Kaleido Heart and the first uh, fusion I'll make is Kit and I'll add Soliac. So I'll only go Kit, Kaleido, add Soliac. And then if I get nibiru it'll immediately trigger my Kaleido Heart, then I'll summon it back, and then I'll send the last name from my deck to the grave, make another fusion, and then I'm allowed to keep playing. And then I still have the Soliac plus Kaleido as well. So there are ways to play around Nibiru. Nibiru isn't in everyone's main, but it's in enough. So I really want everyone to think about this flex spot here to really decide which one you want to run. Because I still think the Apus is really cool because of certain situations against decks that just really can't play around all the negation that this provides. But at the same point, the Zeus option is still really nice too. But I still think that having the Dweller as a two turn versus one is just really impactful at the end of the day. So it's really up to you as to which card you want to run as your last spot. I was running Dugaris for a little while. I thought that card was really cool too because of the draw option, the reborn option. Like if your Kaleido gets dealt with, you can go ahead and reborn it, which is really cool. Like if you can't get to your uh, kick close or if your kick close gets like negated, that you have like another way to get it back on board. And that was really impactful for a while as well. But moving on from these, I want to talk about key factors in the mirror match that you really have to pay attention to. So the first one that I've already talked about was the Kaleido Soliac play. Being able to bounce Snows, being able to bounce Kaleidos, it's really important to be on top of both of these cards. You really need these available to you. Then also having the Prime Evil, honestly, the attack gain and being able to just swing over a Kaleido is really impactful too. The pops of this card allows is really impactful as well because of the fact that if your opponent has cards like Drago Stapelia and the same chain link you can use the field spell to go ahead and pop the drago stapelia it'll no longer be on the field meaning it will no longer affect your monster which is really nice too 
And then also Super Poly, of course, just being what it is, it's Super Poly. It's something that can really shut down the mirror match. This is something where if you do make the Dweller as well, and then you Super Poly your opponent's board and make your own like kit, it can be very game ending at that point. So that's something where I definitely think we're going to see a hit to Super Poly on this next ban list, but we'll see when that is. It's been quite a while. I hope that it's soon. The next key factor here is going to be Droplet or Gamma in the sideboard. You have to run these cards because of Dweller. I have Imperm currently in my deck list that you'll see, but I am swapping it out for Droplet. Droplet is so much better because of the fact that your opponent could just have the elf that's pointing at the Dweller and then you can't Imperm it. So you need Gamma or Droplet to go ahead and shut down the Dweller. It's very important because the Dweller is so impactful against the Mirror Match. It's literally something that you almost have to pass against. I like having the Dangers in the deck, but it's something where even if your Dangers get sniped out of your hand and Dweller is live, it does hurt a lot, but it's still something that allows you to extend through a lot of what's going on. Uh, especially if you hard open like the Super Poly, you're not immediately just kind of like dead. I've had games where I had like Super Poly, a Danger, and then Havness. And so I'll try to like summon the danger to like swing over the dweller. I have Havness for the follow up turn. I have Super Poly. So there's definitely times where you can live through the dweller, but almost always this card is very just game ending. It's really insane. A very important tip for playing into the mirror match is actually just summoning the Mud Dragon first. This card is really crazy, especially if you open up the instant fusion. A lot of times this is actually really smart to go for. This also just dodges the field spell pop, it dodges Dragon's Topelia, Kaleido Heart and the Soliac if you just call Dark on Summon, which is pretty crazy before you commit anything to your board. I think summoning the Mud Dragon early in the mirror match is something that has won me more games than I can count. Honestly, this card is really strong and you should definitely consider this as an option whenever you're going into the mirror match. The next thing that I wanna talk about is going to be the line of play that you typically go for in this deck. And that's gonna be starting off with that Kick Close. The Kick Close is going to search and summon the Murley. You're gonna mill eight cards. So then you'll summon Garura, and then with that Garura and the Murley, you'll go into Elf, which then you'll be able to draw a card. And then typically the last fusion that you'll make is the Kaleido Heart. The next thing I wanna talk about too is a very insane side tech. This is something that I was thinking of and I started trying it out and this card is absolutely broken. It's so good. And Danger tier limit, you almost never need your normal summon. You will normal summon Rhino Heart here and there, but you have so many different ways to extend and play the game that it almost never mattered. Having this card going into Sprite is crazy because if they have like three sets, they have like their Elf Toad. You normal Denko, you shut down the starter, smashers, whatever they have. You can swing Denko into Elf and then destroy the Elf. So all they have left is a Toad. It's really crazy. Also against Math Mech being able to shut down the Super Factorial, you can go even into the the mirror match if they haven't gotten to snow yet and you normal some of this i shut down a super poly a call by the grave and a soliac and then all they had on their board was like kit and a rhino heart which was really crazy too so i think this card has a lot of potential this meta a lot of people are just not expecting this at all which is really fun uh, every single time that i've summoned this so far i've always just gotten like some kind of reaction where everyone's just kind of like what is that like you know like it's crazy uh it's, it's a lot of fun to use though i like this card a lot uh, it's only like $2 for a secret right now too, so I definitely recommend picking up a set and at least trying it. This card is really crazy. Uh, moving on though, Merely is very important to the deck though, being that it is a level 2. And we talked about this earlier as it is a bigger part of the combination decks, being able to go into your plays like your Elf, Gigantic, into Jet, Smashers, which again, Smashers, Jet was played when mine was a bigger problem, because at that point you had another out to mine in your deck. But so a lot of people right now are using the merely to get into your elf and then you can go ahead and elf bring it back on your opponent's turn and then mill three and it's just really impactful as well because you can't target anything that the elf points to and so it's almost guaranteed that you're going to be able to resolve this which is really cool too uh, but moving on from this, I want to talk more about the top of logics and what they bring to the deck. The top of logics are really good. Zero Boris is really strong in the mirror match because you can go ahead and clear everything. I have banished a field spell, double trap, collide heart, kit, and a Havness on board just because of Zero Boros and just getting rid of everything, which was really nice and it won me the game. And then also Bomber Dragon is really crazy too against things like Sprite. You can also go ahead and blow up your own board, again, triggering all of your tier names, which is really cool too. But the more important interaction here is going to be the Elf IP merely play. You go Chain Link 1 Elf, Chain Link 2 Mascarena. Mascarena will go into your Bomber or Zero Boros. And then your Elf will go ahead and summon the merely to an arrow, depending on which one you summon. 
either you'll summon it to the zero boros and then zero boros mandatory chain link one merely chain link two mill three or you'll summon it to bomber mill three and then you'll go ahead and bomber blow it up and then merely effect will resolve in the graveyard as well so they're both very strong this little loop here is really crazy and this is something that i really like to do in the deck because it's honestly just such a crazy blowout when it happens too and then you can go ahead and use merely if you're on bomber to summon out a kit summon kit to the arrow that bombers at and then again chain link one chain link two add something like a haveness and then blow up your kit and then your kit will then mill five so the top logics just add a really high ceiling to the deck the other thing that i want to talk about is a really crazy way to play through interruptions in the deck this is really impactful really nice so if you know that your opponent has quite a bit or if they're on hand traps you can go ahead and make dark and so this will actually prompt a gizmek or a snow but if your dark doesn't get negated and then you know that your opponent has a gizmek in the graveyard i almost immediately will just go dark target gizmek to go ahead and bait it out immediately so your opponent can't summon it again when you go for game which is really nice too because at that point again you can just summon any other monster and then go into your elf and bring back like a merly also you can use dark to go ahead and target something really impactful in your opponent's graveyard like a kid close because kid close just happens on summon so if you summon it off dark you do get the effect of kid close which is really crazy so a lot of times if your opponent does have snow and grave your opponent will go ahead and just use snow to banish the kick close so you don't get that extra card which then forces the snow and then you can go ahead and collide it back to deck so this is another really crazy card in the deck dark really does a lot for you and then you can go directly into your elf play which is really strong or if you're on gigantic you can do that too but overall i think this card's very strong for the deck and really does help you play through that interruption so the last thing i want to talk about here is going to be the list zephyros especially this is a really important card for making cards like dweller dweller is just so strong and you really want to make it against every matchup for the most part it's really good i was playing against invoke shadal dogmatica and someone dweller and it was so good against all the shadal cards uh but like dweller in general is just like the best card this format is actually so wild but in the extra deck you'll see that i am on cards like unicorn as well uh unicorn has been in and out of the list a lot for me i think the card's still really impactful and still really nice to have there's a lot of times where you summon the ip and all you really want to do is spin something back and you don't want to make like the bomber or the zero boros so i think having the unicorn in there is actually just really nice um the extra deck it was really tight for a while because there's just a lot of cards that you felt like you had to play but now i feel like there's definitely a few flex spots uh the opalooza really where zeus option is still going to be that one spot there but even like the unicorn you can play it, you don't have to there's a lot of people who don't play the ip and i still think the ip is really good though uh, as for the sideboard, I am changing out those imperms for droplets. I think droplets is just really impactful right now. You have thrown the gamma for the dweller. I do run Denko. I think that card's just really good right now. I think that card's actually just insane. Um, main decking Nibiru. I think that card's really good right now. You really have to run it, especially against a lot of the different decks comboing off right now. And then also having the danger package. I don't play the snake. I don't think that it's that good. It's also just not a four. I know that's still really good for curious, but like I don't even make curious that much. I think that it's really nice when you can make it. But there's a lot of other lines that you go into where the whole point is literally just go like elf dweller ip and then call it a day with like a happiness in hand which is really insane too i really hope that you enjoyed this video today if you haven't already checked out my discord twitch twitter instagram definitely go down in the description below check them all out and if you want a coaching session over on metify definitely go ahead and let me know in discord if you have any questions and i hope that everyone has a wonderful day and i'll catch you all in the next video thank you